I'm sorry, I hit the uh, stop button by mistake, okay? So we just continue on. Yeah, this is the formula, okay? For all A, okay? And was it? what is it? Is it equal to 4? For all A. Okay. That's kind of surprising, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, we didn't quite give mathematically rigorous proof yet. So maybe we'll do it after a break or something. Okay. Well, let's do it real quick, okay? So, uh... Let's say sine, I mean, the sh what was this? Integral, integral from zero, zero to uh, pi. Well, you have, uh, this is pi, 2 pi, okay? Now, for A, when A is equal to 2, uh, When a is equal to three, okay, so you goes like th two, one, two, one, three, okay. So the period for uh, y three, y y three is equal to uh, what sine three x, okay. Period is uh, two pi, two pi period p is equal to two pi over three, okay. So this point here is like 0 0.6 pi, right here, it's like 0 0.6 pi, okay? That's the period of uh, y is equal to sine 3x, okay? And we know, we just proved that And we are doing half the period, okay? Half the period. Sine AX is equal to what? 2 over A, right? Now, then, sigma, I mean, integral, I better start using some darker color here so that you can see it. We are kind of doing informal proof, okay? Just informally, all right? 
from uh, integral from 0 to uh, 2 pi over a which is the uh, is this uh, period okay 2 pi over a that period is and absolute value of sine ax is equal to what two times of this because we are flipping is is the same area you know so four over a okay all right now how many How many this guy, this full circle exists? There are three of them. Okay, because we are shrinking three times. Okay, yeah. So, the that's why the from uh, zero to two pi sine of ax absolute value dx. I'm I'm forgetting all this dx stuff. Dx is equal to 4 over a multiplied by a is equal to 4 because there are a of them when a is equal to 3 there are three full circles okay so we multiply by a and it becomes 4 so we now just proved it okay yeah the total area after we flip them over okay it does not depend on a because it cancels out. It's always, always four. Okay. To me, it was kind of surprising, and actually, so I presented this informally after class to my mathematics professor and a couple of my colleagues, and they were surprised too, because it's not that obvious. I was surprised too. Okay, so it's something very cool. Okay, it does not depend on a. All right sine okay it's uh sine area equality theorem okay how about that you can generalize this even further because what we just proved here what we just proved here is when a is integer okay Maybe you can generalize when a is like some real number, okay? And you can even generalize even further this 0 and 2 pi. Maybe it doesn't have to be 0 and 2 pi. It could be some other number. Maybe then, maybe you will change, you have to change this 4. Maybe it depends on these guys. I think my conjecture would be this, okay? Okay, yeah, we're doing mathematics. It's fun. Math is fun. Okay. Sigma Okay, so when 2 pi it was 4 Okay I'm thinking How about this pi is not and when pi it was two, okay? What if this guy is some random number like <sighs> theta? Then what would this be in terms of theta? So you divide by pi and multiply by Divide by 2 and multiply by pi. Okay? Divide by 2. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You divide by... Uh, you divide by pi. Multiply by 2. Okay? Divide by, by pi and multiply by 2. Divide by pi, multiply by 2, okay? 
So my speculation conjecture will be fr uh, integral from 0 to uh, 2 theta over pi. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Integral zoom 0 to, a, 0 to theta of uh, sine ax absolute value dx is equal to 2 theta over pi. That's my conjecture, okay? And we'll take a shot at proving this, okay? How exciting is that? We'll take a break though. The brand, brand new uh, equation, we just discovered a brand new mathematical equation, man. We'll try to prove this, this okay? Okay, yeah, we try to prove that. When A is any number, it could be real number. It doesn't have to be integer. All right? Maybe this equation already exists somewhere in some mathematics. Maybe somebody already proved this. We don't know. If they did, yeah, kudos to them, okay? But we are doing it because it's fun. Okay. I mean, I cannot read all the mathematics books, man. Ah, uh, come on. Okay. We try to prove this, okay? Uh, after a break. Well, before we erase everything, let's, let me take a picture of this. It kind of looks cool. I mean, the coloring. All right, let's take a picture of this. Ooh, sexy, sexy. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll try to take a shot at proving that, okay? Hmm. Let's take a break.
Uh, but uh, let's take a break. Let's chat a little, okay? So, you know General Patton, right? General Patton during the World War II, who defeated with his tanks, the Nazi tanks, okay? So, yeah, General Patton, okay? He's extremely, he went to West Point, by the way. Yeah, West Point is fine, okay? Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I talk shit about elitist institution like West Point or Harvard, but they're doing fine jobs, okay? I heard report, news report, I mean, even news, media, they're not all bad. MSNBC, CNN, um, CBS, yeah, liberal media outlets, they're not all bad. They're just organization. No organization is perfect. I mean, is the Republican Party perfect? No. Anti-abortionism, that's very sexist, okay? So, uh, they, they are just like Islam. They are putting all the burden on women. Okay, they shouldn't do that. Okay, they, both men and women should share equal burden in terms of unwanted pregnancy or sexuality. Men and women should share equal burden. We, we should never put all the burden, burden on women like anti-abortionism in Republican Party or uh, burqa hijabism of uh, Islam, okay? They are putting all the burden on women. That's sexism, okay? That's not good, okay? Media, yeah, <clears throat> they're mostly doing good jobs. And in elit in elitist institutions like West Point, Harvard, Stanford, Princeton, yeah, they're doing fine job, I think, okay? So I talk shit about everybody and every institution, okay? So don't get me wrong, okay? They're doing fine job, I think. I heard this news report where <clears throat> all these elitist schools, they start to uh, take in very poor poor students, give extra points to poor people, poor students, okay? That's fantastic, okay? Yeah, it's love, you know? Yeah, giving them some love, you know? That's very cool, okay? So, yeah, very humanitarian. Um, so, the what's bad about communism and Socialism is this. It's a mandatory charity. That's not good. Okay, Charity has to be voluntary based. Voluntar is ha charity has to be volunteerism. Voluntary basis. Not mandated by law. Okay? Be then it sucks out all the spirit of morality. Okay? Morality ethics has to be based on voluntarism. Okay? All I'm doing here is voluntary basis. I'm not getting paid for this, okay? Yeah, I like doing this, okay? <clears throat> but voluntarism, virtual voluntarism, okay? <clears throat> yeah, Quran said, do not look at women twice. You see a beautiful woman? Don't look, stare at her, okay? But it has to be based on voluntarism, okay? But if women cover up their body with hijabs and burqas, then there is no voluntarism because there's nothing to see. Women are covering themselves up. So hijab burqaism is very anti-Islam, anti-Quran. Why? The whole point of Quran's law is about man controlling himself. You see a beautiful woman, don't look at her twice. Do not look at her twice. Do not stare at her legs and her body. Don't do that. So, Quran is imposing burden on man. What Quran, what Prophet Muhammad wanted was men should control themselves. But women are covered by hijabs and burqas, then we, men can, don't have to control themselves because they don't see a shit. You see what I'm getting at? <clears throat> original Quran, Prophet Muhammad, he want to put the burden on men so that we men voluntarily control ourselves, our sexual urges, animalistic, bestial, sexual desire. Prophet Muhammad wanted us men to control our desire. How? Yeah, women should expose themselves. They should be beautiful. Long hair, tight fitting clothing, okay, so that we can exercise our control. 
if women cover them all up, cover them with hijabs and burqas and tattoos and piercings, then we don't have any urge to look at them because they are damn ugly. Then it will make Prophet Muhammad's teaching, his rule against staring at women sexually, it will make that rule useless. If you start to cover up women with burqas and hijabs and tattoos and piercings, then because we guys, we don't have any desire to look at them in the first place. So now this Quranic rule of men not commanding men not to stare women twice, not to look at women twice, that rule is now useless. Okay, so hijab, burqaism is anti-Quranic, anti-Islamic. Okay. I can think like this because I'm, I know mathematics. We are being very mathematically precise. Analyt we are being very analytic, logical. Okay. That's why we, we, we are trying to teach you mathematics. It is so important. So that you can think analytically. Okay? Alright? So yeah. Get rid of hijabs and burqas in Islam. Okay? That's anti-Quranic. Burqas and hijabs is against Prophet Muhammad's wishes because he want us men to exercise control over our animalistic desire. All the religion is like that. It's all against animalistic desire. It's about overcoming your animalistic desire. Like that's why religion in Islam and also in old Christianity, like Lent, Jesus, 40 days, 40 nights, fasting okay i'm not asking you we are not asking you to fast for 40 days and 40 nights no nah. fasting okay and what we do here is alcohol fasting i'm not eating what time is it now 2 30 okay the last time i ate today was uh before i went to church so it was like 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, that's the last time I ate. But I'm drinking alcohol, okay? So alcohol fasting, okay? Yeah, fasting. You don't eat food. Alcohol is spirit. If you do it properly, yeah, alcohol is also Holy Spirit as well. Okay? Bacchusism, Dionysianism, yeah, that's Holy Spirit. Okay, in, in the eyes of humanology. This humanology, okay? Yeah, spirit, alcohol, vodka, strong liquor. Yeah, this, this, uh, if you done it properly, it, there is the Holy Spirit, okay? So, um, yeah, fasting, and you don't look at women twice. And also Jesus said, uh, yeah, if you look at women with, with lust, then you're committing adultery with her, okay? So, Jesus is teaching, Prophet Muhammad is teaching the rule against staring at women, ogling, anti, we call it anti-ogulism, anti-ogle, O-G-L-I, O-G-L-E, ogle, like staring at women, their legs, their breasts, their armpits, their neckline, their breastplate, chest plate. Their legs, their ass, their crotch, whatever. Ogulism. Anti-ogulism. Okay? Anti-ogulism can be exercised only when there are beautiful women. Okay? If you make all the women ugly by covering, with, covering women with ta tattoos and piercings and hijabs and burqas, then anti-ogulism anti rule is useless. You're obviating obviating that rule. You're bypassing that rule. You're making life over man very easy. 
I mean, moral, ethical life of a man, you're making it too easy because you are making women ugly. So you see that woman covered with tattoos and piercings and burkas and hijabs. We men, we don't want to look at her because she's damn ugly. There's nothing to look at. So our life, moral life, ethical life is so easy. It's so easy to practice Christianity. So easy to practice Islam. Because there's nothing to look at. Okay? So we are obviating. O-B-V-I-A-T-E. Obviate. Okay? We are bypassing Quranic look. Quranic spirit, spirit of Quran, spirit of Islam, spirit of Christianity, spirit of Jesus, spirit of Prophet Muhammad Allah. We are bypassing it. We are making it too easy for us guys. And we are making it very difficult for women. Because they, they have to cover up themselves up with burqas and hijabs and their life is miserable. Because they are unhappy. And it's also burdensome to put on hijabs and burqas and their life is hard they are not happy because they, they, women are women can be happy only when they are beautiful and they are appreciated by other men that's the prime source of happiness for women what's prime source of happiness for men yeah looking at beautiful ladies but on the side vision not the direct vision on the side vision indirect vision okay You take that away by covering up women with burqas and hijabs, then men are ha unhappy. Women are unhappy because they are ugly. And men are unhappy because we don't get to see beautiful ladies. Everybody's unhappy. That's why violence is so prevalent in the Middle East. All this terrorism, all this hatred. Okay? <clears throat> That's just the way it is, okay? So, so we're gonna prove this, okay? And then um, it shouldn't be that difficult, okay? So, but before that, we're kind of taking break now, okay? I already took a picture of this so I can erase this. Yeah, we, we are still taking a break, and I mean, we're just chatting, talking about something else before we start to prove this, okay? It shouldn't be that difficult to prove that, okay? Um, so, uh, life is not linear, it's sinusoidal. Life is not linear. So linear projection is wrong, always wrong. What, what do I mean by this is uh, the foretelling fortune telling or prediction because sometimes you think oh I'm going through this bad time so it will only get worse and that's why I have to commit suicide okay when we are happy oh yeah it will, life will be like, happily ever after like in fairy tale happily ever after it goes up and up and on and we, I'm gonna be get happier and happier it will never end I happily ever after or if I'm having bad time or oh, it will always go down and there will be no end of the tunnel and that's why I have to come so suicide because it will only get worse okay just linear projection linear pro prediction and it's wrong life is not like that life is not linear it's sinusoidal it goes up and down and up and down sinusoidal it's like sine curve like wa ocean wave, night and day, summer and winter, okay, sinusoidal, sine curve, that's life, okay. So and also if that's history, microscopically that's life, macroscopically that's human history. It always go up and down, up, up and down. Do you want to predict the future? I tell you. If you are going through a very bad time, yeah things will start to go up. If you are going through a very happy time, probably things will start to go down. Okay. 
it go up and down, up and down, night and day, winter, summer, winter, summer, night, day, night, day, happy, unhappy, happy, unhappy. That's how you can predict the future. Okay? Yeah, sinusoidal projection. Okay? Now, we'll, we'll talk about one more thing and we'll take a break and try to prove that shit, okay? This is a fourth degree sinusoidal curve. Fourth degree. Second degree is like this. Inside of this sinusoidal curve, macroscopically, and if you see microscopically, yeah, it kind of go up and down, up and down, okay? The second degree or second order sinusoidal curve. Third degree is like this, okay? You got the point, right? So second degree is like this, okay? Okay? Third degree would be Okay, that's third, deg third degree sinusoidal curve. Third order sinusoidal curve, okay? You got the idea, right? <laughs> let, me, let me zoom it in for you, okay, so that you can see it. First degree, second degree, and third degree, okay? Okay? Is this uh, recursive kind of concept, recursion, concept of recursion or fractal geometry, whatever, okay? Just wanna, wanted to mention it to you. Life is kind of like that, okay? So, so we're gonna take a break and we'll take a shot at proving that conjecture, okay? Mathematical conjecture is unproven formula, unproven equation or inequality, whatever, unproven Mathematical statement, sentence, concept, idea. We think that's true. That's a conjecture. If we prove it, then it becomes a theorem. Okay? How exciting is that? It could be a rediscovery or a brand new discovery. And we don't care, okay? We just want to have fun. Excitement. Brand new or rediscovery, whatever. Just proving a brand new, we think, theorem. And if it's not brand new, that's fine too. Okay? Okay, we'll take a break and we'll take a shot at proving that, okay? Alright. We'll be back. We will be back. Take five. <coughs>
Okay, we'll talk about general pattern a little bit, okay? Because uh, I I make this mistake all, all the time, right? I start talking about something and then I veer into another subject. But let's get back to general pattern discussion. Okay, so general pattern. Um, very very smart and talented general uh, went to West Point and uh, his career went down after he slapped a soldier like this. Okay, and I think that's wrong. I mean, what's what's a big deal? Like he didn't injure anybody. He hurt his feelings. Because this soldier in his general Patton's mind was malingering. Okay, so he slapped his face and now he. He got demoted or something like that, okay? So, that's wrong, okay? You slap a soldier, so what? What's the big deal? Come on. I don't think it's such a big deal. It, he didn't injure him, it just hurt his feelings. It's no big deal. You don't have, you don't have to punish your general just because he slapped a soldier. I don't think it's such a big deal, okay, so. Okay. And General Patton, he kind of looks like, I mean, President Trump, Donald J. Trump, he kind of looks like General Patton. They have about the same kind of mask and expression. They kind of look alike, General Patton and President Trump, okay. It's a compliment to President Trump, okay. <laughs> because. General Patton is a great general. He's a great general. He could have, if our U.S. Army used him and didn't punish him like that, they could have saved so many lives. They could have ended the World War II a lot sooner. Okay? They punished the wrong general. Okay? They, they shouldn't have punished him like that. He could have saved a lot of European and American lives and by ending the World War II very early if U.S. Army used General Patton and not punish him, okay? But General Patton, he was a Christian and he actually believed in the power of prayer, okay? So he called this our U.S. Army chaplain and ordered U.S. Army chaplain to pray to God so that he has some clement weather in this battle day, day of the battle. And this, uh, I, I read about it, okay, this episode. This uh, United States Army uh, chaplain was kind of resistant. Hey, Mr. General, uh, hey, it doesn't work that way, okay? You cannot order me. You cannot order me to pray to God, or you cannot order God to give you some nice weather. That's kind of blasphemous and sacrilegious. Uh, you know, it doesn't work that way. And General Pat Patton was very insistent. No, I want you to pray. I'm not ordering God. I'm asking him. I'm asking you. Please pray to God to give us nice weather in this battle zone. And finally, uh, the chaplain relented and he did pray. And guess what? It happened. It was nice weather and he won that battle. General Patton, okay? I like him, okay? He's cool. Tough, disciplinaire, okay? He's very cool, okay? All right, so that was Patton, General Patton. Also, General MacArthur, also very cool guy, okay? Also, President Truman, I like him a lot, why? Because he had to, he, he's a tough decision to make. Yeah, yeah, Japanese, yeah, he dropped two bombs, atomic bombs in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, okay? But he had to, okay? To me, President Truman, Truman is not only American hero, but he's a world hero. He he should have been given the Nobel Prize. 
Okay, he made a tough call, but he had to, and he did right. I think it was the right call. Look at Japan now. It it all recovered. Yeah, people died, but Japan as a nation, it recovered. Okay. And look at Japan. You have what Suzuki. You have Toyota, Honda. You have Sony, and it's flourishing. Yeah, Japan, yeah, it's very resilient country. Like Germany, right? Yeah, Germany is very resilient con co country. Look at Mercedes, BMW. Okay. Volkswagen. Volkswagen. Yeah, German engineering. Okay, very resilient. Okay. All right. So let's try to prove that shit. Okay. So probably the easiest way to prove that is uh, we are not going to be overly ambitious here. Okay. So we think about the case where uh, a is equal to an integer, not real number. To prove that, we'll li leave it to someone else, okay? Because my mathematics is kind of shallow, it's very short and thin. Just my thinning hair, my body hair. My mathematics isn't that good, okay? So we'll just prove it when a is equal to integer. I mean, natural number, even, okay? So. We'll prove it nice and easy, okay? So, when a is equal to 1, absolute value of sine ax, okay? You can't quite see clearly, can you? I'll, I'll zoom it in for you for 5 seconds, okay? Integral from 0 to theta, okay? Absolute value of sine ax dx is equal to 2 theta over pi. Okay, that's our conjecture. Let's see if it's correct or not. When a is equal to, a is a natural number, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, okay? a. Okay? Uh, because a is natural number, we can use mathematical induction. We prove that uh, when a is equal to 1, it's true, we prove that, and mathematical induction. Yeah, look it up, mathematical induction, okay? Then we assume that this formula is correct when a is equal to n, and then from there, we assume that, and then we prove that uh, this formula is true when n, a is equal to n plus 1. Okay, it's like domino. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah, we can use mathematical induction. Okay. To prove this, it's a very powerful proving technique in mathematics. Okay. We can do that, but uh, we just prove for now. Try to prove the traditional algebraic way. Okay, or geometric way. Okay. Analy analytic fashion, okay? So when a is equal to 1, sine x, right? The period is the time, okay. In trigonometry, oftentimes, many times, time is equal to theta, okay? Like clock, your wall clock, right? Your hour handle, hour arm, and I mean hour arm and short short hour arm, and you have longer minute arm, even even longer second arm or second needle. Yeah, this angle. Theta is equal to time, right? Tick, 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 tick. Angle is equal to time, okay? So that's a concept we frequently use in mathematics too, okay? 
we always we we say sine theta or many times we say sine t sine t sine theta or sine t we kind of equalize we treat angle equal to time just like in a clock okay okay sine t sine theta we use it interchange interchangeably okay in mathematics all right okay so <clears throat> and this time or angle okay angle is equal to time okay just like in a clock okay the time it takes from zero this is y this is x x is equal to theta is equal to time okay x is equal to horizontal horizontal uh, vector coordinate is equal to theta angle time and t time okay so the time to take this full circle from here to here like 24 hours or 60 minutes okay it's called period of the sine curve okay and when a is equal to 1 is 2 pi which means uh, 360 degrees Halfway here is uh, pi, okay? Now, sine ax, okay? Uh, if a is equal to 3, is it 0 0.5, 0 0.6, is about here, okay? Oh, sorry. Here you have 2 pi. 2 pi over 3. Okay? Here we have pi over 3. Okay? Period, half a period. Period, half a period. When A is equal to 3. Okay? You got that? We just divide by A. Give me one second. Just chatting with my friend. All right, so. Because now we have absolute value, right? That's causing some problem, okay? Because we have to divide this interval from zero to theta, okay? Um, Okay, when uh, the sine curve go under, under the horizon, under the ground level, then we have to put minus sign, maybe minus sign AX to make it positive. Okay? Hmm. You know, there was this, this mathematician uh, from what, Hungary or something, Benoit Mandelbrot. He, he was kind of like us. He's got a very intuitive kind of math mathematician, not quite mechanical. 
very creative. Okay, so he will come up with some equation and leave others, let others prove it. He didn't spend time like proving it. Okay, so kind of lazy, smart ass, smart but lazy kind of guy. Is he from Hungary or what? Benoit Mandelbrot. Poland, not Hungary. Yeah, he, he he's from Poland. Poland, Polish. Yeah, he became professor in uh, Harvard University in mathematics department. Yeah, he is kind of creator of fractal ge geometry. Okay, so um, yeah, he just leave others that others prove the equation that he came up with. Okay. Benoit Mandelbrot. We kind of feel like doing that, okay? Because do we want to prove this yet? Oh, I don't know. Uh, nah. <laughs> this, this equation, okay? Let's take a picture of this, at least. We suspect that's true, okay? But it's a conjecture now because we didn't quite prove it yet. <sighs> I don't know. The idea is this, okay? Idea is that um you have interval from zero to theta, right? We have to divide those intervals. Okay? Let's say step by step, okay? The easiest example is when theta is equal to 2 pi or pi, okay? Theta is equal to, let's say, pi here, okay? So, uh, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and so half the inter half the period is pi over three, okay? So three pi over three, yeah, which is equal to pi, okay? So it goes like this. I mean. Then you have one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? So you have six of them. Okay? Just flap. Okay? Upper flap, lower flap. Okay? Three upper flaps, lower upper flaps. High and low. Okay? Six of them. Okay? Okay, okay. So we got the correct picture here. If pi is equal to, I mean, theta is equal to pi, we have to divide this from zero to pi, zero to theta, because theta is equal to pi. We have to divide this from zero to pi to three intervals. From zero to pi over three, from pi over three to 2 pi over 3 and from 2, 2 pi over 3 to 3 pi over 3 which is pi okay we have to divide this from 0 to pi the single interval into three sets three intervals okay so 
So to mathematically prove this equation right here, it's not going to be easy, okay? I mean, we did enough work by coming up with this conjecture. I think it's a division of labor. I think it's fair for me, for us to ask, for me to ask you, or to add, for us to ask somebody else, some other people, to mathematically prove this. We did our job, our share of, of labor. It was not easy to come up with this conjecture. We did our job. Don't you think it's fair to distribute and share the burden of labor? I think so. Division of labor, okay? We are creative individuals, okay? And there are other people who are not that creative, who are kind of mechanical, robotic. Yeah, let them do that. We, we need both kinds. It's like yin and yang, you know? We need creative people and we need also mechanical, robotic kind of people. You know, who go to college, who go to Harvard, Yale, who get married, have kids. You know, they become professors and whatnot. We need those people. Yeah, they will have some constant supply of sex because they are married from their wife, right? Yeah, they have sex. They have good jobs as professors, and yeah, they went to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, MIT, West Point, whatever. They're kind of elites, very me mechanical kind of people, you know. And there are some outliers like you, some of you and me, okay, me definitely, who dropped out of Ivy League school in PhD program, you know, wander around and making minimum wage level in Los Angeles, working in McDonald's and Burger King or Subway Sandwich, or then we were do, I was doing acting and I was work, working as a computer programmer and later on, and then I joined the US Army, not as an officer, but as a junior enlisted soldier, and then got GRB law school, came to Alaska, tried to get a lawyer job, but I couldn't. They wouldn't hire me, so I got a computer programmer job again and making $30,000 a year, which was the same money I was making 10 years ago. I was 37, and but I have extra time, so I come up with some brand new mathematical equation, and yeah, we have some of you and me, I definitely, I'm more laid back, more creative kind, okay? Underdog, low social status, very little money that I'm making, okay? Like Abel, Galois, whatever. They kind of died very early. But I, I, me, am I gonna die early? Well, I'm 40 years old, so I'm already old, okay? But I'm not a suicidalist. I'm a survivalist, okay? We'll take a break and we'll continue this discussion, okay? We're just taking a break from this mathematical mumbo jumbo, okay? We may go ahead and prove some, some part of it, okay? But most likely we'll leave it to other mathematicians, okay? Because we did our share of labor. It's division of labor, okay? Yeah, let's give them some jobs. Let them publish in the academic paper, journal, articles, whatever. So I'm not doing it, no. That's too mechanical, robotic. I, I don't have time for it, okay? It's a division of labor, okay? Let other people publish this, by all means, okay? So, all right. Let them prove it, let them be famous, let them make money, let them get all the fame, okay? Because I'm not interested in that. My job is to give them jobs. I'm more like king of kings, boss of bosses, okay? Yeah, do this, and you'll get paid, okay? But I'm not gonna do this on my own. I did enough labor by coming up with this, okay?
okay so let other people prove it and publish it and become famous they get paid okay all right we'll take a break okay Okay, uh, we are back, all right? Sorry, I'm making sure my zipper is up. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Mozart and Salieri, okay? Uh, the, it was, I think it was British play in theater. This uh, Amadeus, okay? And then I think the Wolfgang Peterson so it's a Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, right? So they share the same first name, I guess. This American director, I think he's from uh, Czechoslovakia. Because he's a very, very well established Hollywood director in Los Angeles, California, okay? Wolfgang Peterson. So uh, most scenes were shot in uh, Czechoslovakia, I think. In Prague, I think, Prague, Prague, whatever. I've never been there, okay? So this uh, movie, Mozart, is a fiction. It's not real history, okay? Salieri and Mozart, yeah, they were not enemies, okay? It's theatrical reproduction. It's a fiction based on maybe 50% true, 50% false, okay? It's not a history, it's a fiction, okay? Salieri was more like mechanical kind of guy. He was a great teacher. Do you know Franz Schubert? He died like young. Franz Schubert. Some of the music that he composed, like Trout. Quintet. With violin and piano. Yeah, quintet. Chamber music kind of. Da 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 da. Dun da dun da dun da 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 da
ra ta ta ra ta ra 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 ta ra ra ta yeah yeah he's a he was a genius okay he died like very young like 31 something like that Franz Schubert okay uh, people say he got what tuberculosis or syphilis whatever okay he he died very young okay and he also made other music Ave Maria what does that mean I had to look it up I don't know Latin I don't know what language that even is Ave Maria Hail Mary okay like very Catholic Franz Schubert version because a lot of composers classical music composers uh, wrote music about Ave Maria like Bach Johann Sebastian Bach Bach yeah German composer right German composer uh, yeah, Schubert was also German composer and uh, I think maybe Austrian I don't know so Bach was uh, his Ave Maria Hail Mary it goes like this Ave Maria la ra 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 because I don't know the lyrics I don't know Latin, I don't know German, okay? Just a little bit, okay? Bits and pieces of Latin, German, Italian, I know, just a little bit, okay? Da ra 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 la ra 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 la ra 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 la 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 Ave Maria, Ave Maria, la ra 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 la ra 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 Okay, that's Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach version of Ave Maria. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch out the drinks and I, I'm gonna give you Franz Schubert version of Hail Mary. Okay, Ave Maria. But, but uh, I gotta switch out the drinks. Okay, it's more mellow and more like feminine kind of. Because uh, Bach, Juan Sebastian Bach, he, he's more like masculine figure, okay. But uh, Franz Schubert is more like a feminine kind of, uh, okay, kind of mellow kind of music, okay. Juan Sebastian Bach, he's, he's more like uh, this masculine patriarchal figure. His music is like kind of like that, okay. The way they look, yeah, Schubert kind of moved, kind of a soft, Bach, tough, rough and tough, okay. And their music is reflect their kind of personality, soft versus tough, okay. All right, so, uh, Ave Maria of uh, Franz Schubert, it goes like this. Oh, it's so beautiful. But let me have some drinks. Piano and this soprano or opera singer. Dun 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 Ave Maria. Something like that, okay? It's very beautiful. Okay? Ah, 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 ah. Undulation. Vocalization, alright? Why are we talking about this classical music now? Wind blows, okay? Wind blows this and that direction. It's kind of randomized. Brownian motion, right? So our thought process because we are relaxed 
Okay, it's Sunday. Okay, I don't wanna have fixed agenda. Oh yeah, we are talking about Mozart and Salieri. Okay, Salieri was a great teacher and great learner. He lived. He's from Italy, Salieri. Okay. Franz Schubert was one of his Salieri's students. Look it up, okay? Because I, I looked up and I learned from Wikipedia, okay? Yeah, Wikipedia is very cool, okay? Yeah, I tried to have this article about my movie in Wikipedia and they rejected it. Okay? Some people, they, because I, I read that this uh, trail of blogs, should we uh, have this guy's movie in Wikipedia or not? There was some debate going on, okay? Wikipedia editors, okay? And they're fantastic, okay? So they're all voluntary based, you know? And some guy said, yeah, yeah, I, I think we should put it, put his movie article, article about his movie. Yeah, we should keep that in Wikipedia. But other people said, no, he's just trying to advertise his movie. And the, the other gen, kind and generous kind of guy, he said, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll just go along with majority. Because he was kind of a lone dissenter, you know. But maybe one day, when he, his movie become very famous, yeah, then maybe that day we'll let him put it in Wikipedia article about his movie, okay? Yeah, that, they're both correct. One lone dissenter and other guys, they're both correct, okay? Did I try to advertise my movie by uh, writing an article in Wikipedia? Yes. One day will my movie become very famous? Maybe, okay? Yeah, but, so yeah, they rejected my article about my movie in Wikipedia, so. But that's fine. Wikipedia yeah, is, is their cool, okay? And goods and bads, hits and misses, because they love homosexuality, okay? They are kind of liberal that way, okay? Whatever. And when I was a computer programmer, when I was working as a computer programmer, we have all these wonderful computer programmers in the, in the what? Stack Trace, Stack Trace, something like that, Stack Exchange. Stack Trace is kind of computer programmer's jargon, okay? Slang, whatever. Because when we get an error, yeah, we have this long, like, log, text, you know, what went wrong, okay? This part of this compiler feature, whatever, okay? This is called stack trace, okay? So that we can identify where this bug is from, this computer program error. Bug, B-U-G. We call it bug. To fix this, error in computer program, yeah, we call it debugging, okay? So this stack trace system, it kind of uh, help us to fix the error in our computer program, okay? Debugging, that's what stack trace. So stackexchange.com, something like that, okay? They're a wonderful community of computer programmers who answer questions, okay? Fantastic. Many of them are voluntary based. Some of them get paid. Yeah, through advertisement, whatever, okay? But yeah, great, great pro community. Computer programs com community, okay? So uh, Wikipedia is kind of like that. Maybe some people get paid. Uh, we don't know. I don't know, okay? But mostly, it's, I think it's voluntary based. So I read this article about uh, Franz Schubert, okay? And I just learned that he was a student of Salieri, Antonio Salieri or something. Yeah, and not, it's not Schubert. Let me look it up again, Salieri. He was a fantastic teacher of wonderful composers who, who became more famous than he was. Salieri, let me look it up. Who are some famous students of Salieri? Sounds more like salary. <laughs> Salieri. 
Antonio Salieri, okay? He's a, he was a great teacher, okay? Let's see some famous students over here, pupils, apprentices over here. Okay, Franz Liszt, Franz Schubert, and guess what? Ludwig van Beethoven. Beethoven. Liszt, do you know Liszt, Franz Liszt? I think he's a uh, French, I think. Austrian or? Hungarian, okay. Hungarian composer. So Franz Liszt is a Hungarian composer, okay? So like Le Prelude okay? or Hungarian Rhapsody, whatever, okay? He's fantastic, okay? So uh, Franz Liszt, Franz Schubert, and Beethoven, like Beethoven sy Symphony, you know? They were all students of none other than Antonio Salieri. So he was kind of elitist, you know, Salieri, because uh, it Italy, they were big in opera and classical music. Okay, the Roman Empire, Roman engineering. It's all about Rome. It was a light of the world. That's why we call it after Roman Empire collapsed. We call it Dark Age, because Roma Rome was the light of the world, Western world, okay? After Rome collapsed, Roman Empire collapsed, when light went out, light went out, so that's why we call it the Dark Age, okay? And Italy, Roman Empire, they are not white people, no, they are kind of half white, half Middle Eastern, brown people, okay? Yeah, so who collapsed Roman Empire? White Caucasian savages, white Caucasian Northern European savages, barbarians who have brown hair, red hair, blue eyes, green eyes. Okay, they came to Rome to invade. <laughs> we are talking about Visigoths, Vandals, Vikings. Okay, so white people wasn't all that cool back in the days. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it's time to take a break and we continue, all right? But let's take a break. So my vocal cord, you need a break, okay, so. All right, we continue, okay? All right. Uh, turn off the heat, all right.
So somewhat inadvert inadvertently, we are now in the realm of classical music. That's fine. We are just relaxed. Okay. So we we'll talk about this later. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's just chat. Okay. So uh, classical music. I uh, I had this good friend of mine, whose son, who is son of my father's colleague at work okay so yeah my my father and my friend's father their friends colleagues so yeah we became friends me and my father's friend's son okay he was two years older than me okay so, and uh we are kind of middle class and my dad his father, they are both PhDs in economics, doctoral degree, economists, okay? They work at the, for some Korean, South Korean government agency in South Korea, okay? Seoul, South Korea, okay? So we became friends and he's two years older than me, so he taught me about classical music because we are kind of like not upper middle class, maybe a little bit, okay? We, we are the sons of children of this PhD, doctoral degree, educated uh, economists, okay? So, yeah. His father and my father, they both loved classical music, okay? So, but he was older than me, so yeah, he loved classical music, like Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, whatever, Mozart. So he kind of told me about classical music. Also, my father, yeah, he told me about classical music. Okay, my mom, uh, she's not a big fan of classical music, but she was big fan of Carpenters, ABBA, The Beatles, Beach Boys. Yeah, not good old 1960s, 1970s, 1950s. Okay. My mom, my dad, different influence in terms of music, okay? I don't play any musical instrument, though I try to learn, like piano and guitar, but I was not successful, okay? Flute, I mean, the, not flute, but recorder, okay? I was not very good at it, harmonica, yeah, I, I tried to learn those things, but I was not very successful. I did compose some music in my for my movie, okay? You know, when I was making my movie, I was a computer programmer, so I just did it in the computer. I composed music with computer, okay? Yeah, they have this digital spreadsheet, whatever, okay? So I hooked up my, my keyboard electrical. I still, I also, I mean, it's not the same keyboard, but I do have keyboard right there. I show you. Do you see that keyboard right there? Yeah, I have it because I wanted to have it. Do I have a guitar? I do. It's in the storage. I have two storage units, maybe three. Okay. Yeah, I I do have storage unit. Okay. So I have a guitar. Yes. Sometimes I want to practice, but. I was never been successful in learning musical in instruments. Well, I can sing and dance, okay, that's good enough for me. So when I was composing music for my movie, background music, um, yeah, I used some keyboard. I hooked it up to my computer and to my musical software. What is it? It's, it's called Cubase. Yeah, I know Pro Tool, it's, it, that's, very the most popular music composing software okay there are others but i used cubase okay it, it worked very well okay i was able to hook up this keyboard to my computer and to cubase and there's some delay okay but yeah it did help okay when i was composing music yeah i have voice record recorder and in the middle of night or some random time come up with some nice melody or nice percussion beat 
Then yeah, I just. Da 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 Whatever. I just record it with my voice recorder and transfer it to my computer and I just write write the music with the musical software, Cubase, okay? So that's how it got done. You have synth synthesizer, right? Yeah, once you have this melody, the scores, then you can play with any kind of music, any kind of musical instruments, with this one same melody, with the digital technology, synth, like Cubase or Pro Tool, whatever. Yeah, you can plug in violin or piano or organ, harmonica. Okay, they can play digitally the same melody, pa melodic pattern. Okay, so that's how I did made music for my movie, okay? Anyway, so yeah, Salieri, his students like Beethoven or Schubert, Franz Liszt, like Le Prelude, Hungarian Rhapsody, whatever, okay? Oh, and also, uh, <clears throat> he was a benefactor, he was a good man. He was not some evil man, like that play or movie Mozart, uh, Amadeus portrays as they just wanted to make it more dramatic good versus evil okay but Salieri many of his friends and beneficiaries include very very famous people okay He's a, he was a benefactor, very generous and kind man, okay? There's a story that he attended Mozart's um, funeral, okay? One of very few people who attended the funeral of Mozart, okay? So uh, his beneficiaries, some of his beneficiaries are I'm just looking at Wikipedia, okay? Just scrolling down. Where is it? Yeah, so Mozart, he kind of learned from Salieri too, okay? So Mozart was kind of in, very influenced by Salieri, okay? So yeah, Salieri was an elitist from Italy. Italy uh, was kind of like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, MIT of the music back in the days, okay? Back in 1700s, 1800s, okay? trying to look for the names of uh, famous people who are the beneficiaries of uh, Antonio Salieri. So he taught Beethoven, Franz Liszt, Franz Schubert, okay? Very famous people. I'm sorry, uh, who's, so the director who made that movie, Amadeus, okay, original play was by Peter Schaeffer, and uh, film version in 1984 was Milos Forman, it's not Wolfgang Peterson, okay. 
그래서 부업부터 안 피해 갔습니다. 야, yeah, 이래타, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm making a lot of mistakes here. 아, 또 히스네, 히스네, 모스포, 피라스. 엠. Give me one second. So Amadeus, this movie, Hollywood movie, was directed by uh, Milos Forman. Who's Wolfgang Peterson then? Uh, I'm messing it up, sorry. I'm getting old, okay? <sighs> Wolfgang Peterson. I'm sorry. Wolfgang Peterson, he directed In the Line of Fire, okay? He's not the director of uh, Amadeus movie. It was Milos Forman, okay? I'm sorry. Yeah, I messed it up. And, um,. In the line of fire, yeah, it's, it's good, fantastic movie. By the way. Yeah, I was confused. Okay. Uh, so there is another uh, famous uh, this music classical classical music. It's called Pierre Pierre Gint. Okay, Pierre Gint. So Norwegian story. Okay, and uh, Edvard Grieg, he made this fantastic classical music, okay, Edvard Grieg. Edvard Grieg and Salieri. So yeah, Salieri was kind of like a elitist, okay? Because uh, if you watch this movie, Mozart, uh, Amadeus, 1984 version, by, directed by Milos, what's his last name? I forgot, okay? <laughs> yeah, I think it's from Czechoslovakia. Let me look it up. Ah. Salieri.
Milos Forman, I think he's from Czechoslovakia. Yeah, he is uh, Czechoslovakia. Yeah. So, uh, how about the play itself? Amadeus. Peter Sheffler. Yeah, he's British, okay, so it's fictional account of uh, Salieri and Mozart and Salieri was kind of like uh, this Harvard kind of guy, elitist, okay, because he was educated in Italy, opera, classical composer. Italy was the hub of the classical music, okay, opera, like Puccini and v Vivaldi and Salieri and Paganini and Niccolo Paganini. Yeah, it was all those classical music were written in Italian, like Latin, something like that. Okay, so yeah, Italy, the Middle East terms. Okay, there were the, the Harvard and Yale and Stanford, MIT, Princeton of the music back in the days in 1800s and 1700s okay so Salieri was very much elitist okay so elites they are good at learning and teaching okay like professors okay yeah they're good at learning and teaching they're like a machinery they absorb what other people have already done so they learn and then teach like machinery okay so yeah it, all the elites like Salieri they are very me mechanical okay I'm not saying it's bad we need people like that who learn and teach okay but creative person like Mozart they are not mechanical kind of people they're kind of lazy asses like some of you and me Okay, like Rune Descartes. Okay, yeah, we learn, but we create too. We just lie down in, in bed very late, Saturday, Sunday, we drink vodka. Okay, we don't want to prove all that stuff, but we have intuition. Why? Because we play. We work too, we learn too, but we play. Like a Lego. You know, we're just idling. You're playing Lego, Lego blocks from Denmark, whatever. We have extra time. We are not busy. We have leisure. That's the mother bed, motherboard of creativity. It's something that I learned from this German philosopher. Arthur Schopenhauer okay if you want to be creative you need some extra time and leisure okay you need some resources maybe you need some patron who can fund you okay back in the days all these rich people they supported poor artists like artists or scientists like Carillo Galilei or Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci or Donatello or whatnot, okay? Yeah, Picasso, Salvador Dali, Surrealism, you know? <coughs> Vincent van Gogh. Yeah, rich people, they supported these poor, struggling, starving artists. Nowadays, the government is playing that role of rich patrons, taxpayers, okay? Yeah, all the scientists in PhD level, yeah, they got funded by 
National Science Foundation, NSF, or NIH, National Institute of Health, whatever, okay? Yeah, research, research funding, okay? So yeah, yeah, Mozart was kind of creative kind, okay? Salieri is more of a learner and educator, but not much of a creative kind of guy. But Mozart, kind of rebel, creative, poor kind of guy. Salieri, he was rich, okay? Establishment. But that's not bad. He was not a villain. No, he was a benefactor. He taught Beethoven, Liszt, Schubert. He influenced so many other people like Edvard Grieg or... I cannot find that list of people that he ever influenced, okay? But yeah, whole list of people. Yeah, he was a good teacher and good learner, good student and good teacher, okay? He didn't quite create much, okay? He was not a creative kind. He was more mechanical, very well disciplined. Great teacher, great student, okay? But Einstein, Mozart, creative kind of people, they are not very good students, okay? And Einstein, he, uh, he had to take the, this college exam twice because he failed once, okay? And second time he got into this college and then he graduated and he went to this engineering PhD school in Switzerland. Yeah, he got his PhD, but after he got his PhD, I'm sure he applied to professor job, researcher job, but he couldn't get any. So he become a patent clerk. By the way, I'm a patent clerk myself, okay? Because I, okay, I passed a bar in Alaska, okay? So on paper, I'm an attorney, lawyer. And I also passed a patent bar exam, even before I went to law school. Just right, like one day after I got out of the army, honorably discharged from the army, I took this exam because I studied patent bar from the USPTO, okay? Yeah, I took the, I studied and took the exam online and I passed. It was like next day after I was honorably discharged from the US army, okay? And then I started driving to the Midwest from South and then I went to law school, okay? Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm kind of pattern lawyer, pattern agent, whatever, okay? So Einstein got this job as a pattern clerk. That's not a typical job as a PhD, okay? I'm pretty sure he applied to become a professor, researcher, you know, corporation, research institution, universities, but probably they rejected him because he was not a good student. He doesn't have a good GPA, grade, grade point average, whatever, okay? So yeah, creative people like Mozart, Einstein, or me, we can, or you, some of you, you're kind of lazy, okay? Because creativity comes from leisure, laziness, extra time, because we just want to think and come up with our own theory as opposed to doing homework, mechanical stuff, and learning something that other people have already, already done. No, we want to come up with our own stuff, okay? Do you think you are creative because what? You smoke marijuana, you tattooed and pierced, you think you are creative? You are doing tattoos, piercings, and marijuana, LGBT, gay, lesbian, plastic surgery, just because other people are doing it. Okay? Gayism, ultra interracialism, tattoo piercism, sugar fetism, plastic surgerism. You are not being creative. You are doing it because it's the majoritarian mainstream 
jumping in the bandwagon thing, okay? That's not creativity, okay? This majoritarian mainstream thing. You are following the trend, okay? You want to be creative? Then create something brand new. Don't just follow others. Don't give in to peer pressure, okay? <sighs> we'll take a break and we get back to whatever, okay? Okay? We have one hour left, so. Take five, okay?
Okay. So that's about it, okay? It's about division of labor. Different people are good at different things. And there's some creative individuals who are kind of lazy, who drink like Amadeus, Wolfgang Amadeus, Mozart. Yeah, okay. But I'm not a suicidalist. I'm a survivalist, okay? So if American people try to kill me, I'm not gonna just sit here and take it, okay? I'll run out of this country, okay? I'll get the fuck out of this fucking country, okay? I'm not gonna just sit here and let them kill me. Because I say things, right? I'm not Jesus. I cannot resurrect myself like Jesus did. Okay, <laughs> no. I'm a human being. I'm not son of God. I'm not even a prophet. Okay? I try to be a prophet. I want to be a prophet. But I'm not going to just sit here and take it. Okay? If Americans, many Americans want to kill me, I have to get the fuck out of this fucking country. Okay? Where do I go? Maybe Korea, China, Europe, Africa, India, Middle East, wherever. Okay? If enough, okay, I told you this before, and I te I'm telling you this again. My life is okay. It's like zero. Okay, it's not too happy, not too unhappy. It's kind of in the middle. Okay, so death and life to me does not make any difference. Okay, look at me. It's Saint Patrick's Day, Sunday. I dressed up nicely, I took a bath and went to church and I came home, okay? I'm doing this, okay? Life is okay for me. Okay. Did I masturbate this morning? Yeah, I did, okay? So my life is okay, right? It's not plus or minus, it's zero, okay? So death is like zero, okay? Yeah, maybe I can go to hell, heaven, whatever, I don't know. Or maybe there is no afterlife at all. So to me, death and life, it doesn't make that much difference. That's why I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid of death at all. In all honesty, death would be a relief. And it's, it's a line from 24 TV series. Jack Bauer, Jack Bauer <laughs> said that. There's this Nina Myers, this double, double agent, double spy. He tried to, she tried to kill Jack Bauer, and I'm gonna kill you. You'll die. And Jack Bauer said, "I'm already dead. I'm already dead." <laughs> he didn't quite care. Okay. Yeah, death will be a relief. Yeah, he he said that. Okay, so. To me, death would be a retirement, okay? <sighs> if there is no afterlife, if there is nothingness, at least there is nothing. It's like rest, sleeping, okay? If I want to live, survive, it's for the future generation's sake, okay? There are all these evil ideologies in the world that God created. It's not Satan, no. It's just God. One God. He controls. God Almighty, Jehovah, Allah, Buddha, whatever. God controls everything, okay? Monotheism. So it, there's no Satan. No, it's just God. Satan is nothing but this guy who does all the dirty, dirty work, dirty jobs, according to the wishes of his boss, his employer, God. Okay? It's just God who is doing all these evil, horrendous things, creation of evil 
It's all God. Okay? I want to protect children of America and of the world from God. He, he's the one who created all this evil Satan, evil ideologies. Okay? Human, that's where humanology deviates from Christianity. We don't see God as some benevolent entity. God is like a half evil, half good. Maybe 51% good, 49% evil. Okay? He's fucking with us. He's playing us for his own entertainment. Okay? I see the eyes of these beautiful children of the world, no matter what race they are. I want to protect them from evil ideologies of tattoo piercism, sugar fetism, marijuanaism, plastic surgerism, gayism. Okay. If I want to live, it's because I want to live to protect the children of America and the world. Okay, that's the only reason. Okay, that's what keeps me going motivates me to wake up in the morning okay other than that i don't have anything i don't have family i don't have a girlfriend i don't get to have sex no my life is okay but i don't want you to try to kill me because i don't want you to go to jail okay it's not that I want to leave. My life is doesn't have much difference from death. I live, I die, it's there's not much difference. My life is not too happy, not too unhappy, so I don't really have much to live for, okay, because I don't get to have sex, okay. So yeah, but I don't want you to kill me. I don't want people to kill me because I don't want them to go to jail. So my opposition of you or some other people murdering me, killing me, is not for my own sake. It's for your sake and their sake. I don't want you to go to jail. I don't want you to go to hell. Okay? Because to me, Life and death, it doesn't make much difference. Because my life is like jail. I go to work, I come back home, I do this and that. Because I don't have any money, okay? If I have a lot of money, like one million, one trillion billion dollars, then I don't have to go to work, I can have sex with many girls, have a yacht, airplane, Beachfront mansion, lakefront property, but I don't have money. Okay, I pay my bills and there's nothing left. Okay, so life and death doesn't mean a lot to me at all. Okay, but I don't want to kill me because I care about you. I love you, even if you're possessed by some devil, satanic. Motherism, okay. I care about you, so I'm asking you not to kill me because I don't want you to go to jail for your own sake. Don't kill anybody, don't hurt anybody, okay. If I ever become famous and you want your voice heard, ask me. I'm not gonna talk. I will let you talk in front of the world. I gave you, I will give you spotlight, limelight, the center stage. Because I don't want to talk, okay? I've done enough talking in this video series, Humanology YouTube series, okay? If people want to know what I'm about, 
they can just watch this video series. When I'm the pre when I'm the president or when I'm very famous, I will put you on the stage in front of camera so that you can speak freely whatever the hell you think. Okay. Or whatever the heaven you think. Yeah. I give you five minutes each. Okay, because there will be a lot of people who want to talk in front of the international audience. Okay? All right. So yeah, I'm more kind of creative kind of guy, okay, so I gave you enough idea how to go about proving this shit, okay, so, so I'm not going to do it, okay, I did my job, now it's your turn, or somebody else's turn, okay, I gave you the objective, the goal, this, uh, sinusoidal area constant theory theorem whatever okay i gave you the formula to prove okay so now it's your job or somebody else's job it was not easy to come up with this formula okay i did my job okay now it's your turn or somebody else's turn okay division of labor i do my part you do yours okay because uh, I need to eat, okay, I need to sleep, okay, so I think we have did, done enough contribution to the progress of mathematics, okay, so I'll just zoom it in for you, you know, so you can see this, the formula you, that you're going to prove, okay. And we'll call it at that, okay? Because uh, what I want to do next, I need to eat, sleep, maybe some dancing and singing, okay? Because uh, it's my it's my Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. I gotta uh, go back to work, okay? So we call it a day right here, okay? I'm not gonna prove that, okay? You or somebody else will. Okay? God bless them. Alright? Okay, thank you. Bye. Happy Saint Patrick's Day. Okay?